All right, so check in. What's your number? Uh, feeling on the four, four point five. Okay, good. okay. Feeling good. Had a good weekend. Had a good weekend. It was a, it was a weekend. <laughs> it, was, it was a weekend. I see that much. <laughs> Enjoyed your hour of sleep. Yep, extra hour of sleep. Yes, uh -huh. yes, indeed. But I still, it's like the body still has to adjust and adapt. It's like I slept good. What was that? Saturday into Sunday. Yeah. But then trying to get up, got up earlier than necessary. On Sunday. On Monday. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, so it's that whole little biological clock thing. Love it. It was fine. Okay, okay. Um, I don't think there's anything coming up that I need to let you know that the gym would be in use for. I do know this quarter we um, schedule uh, like a curriculum night or a parent night, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure of the date and when it's taking place. Okay. So once I find that out, then I can let you know if anything is happening. Okay. So first we're going to talk about your observation. Let's grab my binder. So you know, formal observation, formal observation, and informals are happening this weeks and the weeks to come um so you might get an email from myself and or gomez about who's doing your formal or informal for that okay. so informal is just they put i did your informal i'll put it in and say so that's your informal yeah and you can go on here and pause um i share with you if not whoever does your formal will share with you this document right here that looks like this your scorecard so oh, this yeah. is your scorecard so you can go in and see all that I did, um, this is, I haven't put in your scores yet, but for your, um, your informals, and I just check off of that. So then when you have your, um, you see, I did your informal on the 18th. So then mm -hmm. I just, whatever I observe is what I give a score for. If I don't observe it, then I don't give a score for it. Right, right. For that. And then I don't, this is, will be your formal observation, which nobody has done yet. So I'm not sure whose list you are on. But you will have that um, done soon for your formal observation. I thought I had the schedule, but I don't. Um, so you'll be getting an email from somebody about that. So those mm -hmm. are all the announcements that I have um, for that. Let me go back to your... Those are all the announcements I have to that. So we're going to jump into your um, observation. I know the last time we talked, um, you had set a goal to do some... Um, add reflection to your classes mm -hmm. from the kids. Um, mm -hmm. When I came in, I didn't observe that because I observed the beginning, but I do want to know if you implemented that in your class and how did that go? Yeah, I, I normally do that at the end of mm -hmm. uh, the class or or the end of the lesson, I should say. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So basically, um, the theme that I've been working on since the beginning of the school year is collaboration and teamwork. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, uh, once we finish the lesson, then I ask, you know, question. Been asking me questions like, how did it go as far as working on their technique, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, on the drills that we're working on, and then uh, I would next ask them their feedback on uh, what they think their collaboration was, as far as like how did they work together as a team, and then uh, of course they give feedback on that, and then I give uh, my observational grade, if you will, mm -hmm. just an informal like assessment of like you know, how well they collaborated and what they needed to improve on. Mm, okay. So I'm gonna have to come in and observe and see how that's going. With that, I would love to, to see that. And that happens at the end of the class. So I know to come yeah. like at the, toward the end. Yeah, a little bit towards the end. Yeah. Okay. Not exactly the end, but. Mm -hmm. So, and I know you also been um, setting a goal around practicing um, kids cheering each other on during their skill, doing their drills and stuff like that. Um, and you mentioned to the kindergartners, like we count as a team, so practicing teamwork with them. So I know that's a challenge building the kindergartners mm -hmm. up to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. So today we're gonna focus on um, student engagement, which is domain, th domain um, 3C. And I want to show you a video. Hopefully it works. They asked me to log in at first, but oh, oh, I still have it up right here. So let's see. So this is addressing different learning styles in PE. Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. This is an anonymous quote, sometimes attributed to Albert Einstein, that sums up the importance of giving each student the opportunity to learn in a way that works for them. Physical education is generally thought of as a kinesthetic, that is, learning with movement, content area. However, incorporating various learning styles into your PE lesson plans has been proven to maximize the learning experience 
and then that's the one they wanted me to pay the $59 right. that mm-hmm. I was not paying. <laughs> but I do want you to take a look at this site because if it's mm-hmm. some benefit to you, um, I think it would be good if, you know, if you wanted to use this as a, a tool because it has a, like a lot of good stuff on here that it talks about videos for like the skeletal system if you were going into like healthy, you know, stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I'm going to send you this website so you could definitely take a look Study at that. Down. So you could, um, yeah. So you could take a look at that. So looking at the video, what are some things that you see that you do do from um, the video when you are modeling the skill or teaching the skill? It's even based upon uh, professional development that we learned last mm-hmm. year. Um, what was it? I do, you do. We do. Mm-hmm. We do. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's this basically what I observed in the video. And what I do in my class, and right now particularly we're working on volleyball technique. So right now we're working on bumping. So I do demonstrate. Mm-hmm. I do talk about the technique, the, the technicalities of it. And... Um, I give students an opportunity. I even demonstrate it with another student what I want them exactly to do when they're working together uh, in their pairs, or it might be like three people. And and we demonstrate together. And then that's their opportunity to pair up with their group. So either it's two or three people, uh, depending on how many uh, balls I have available. And um, they work on a technique. And that's when I give them their time to explore, you know, uh, I like to say make mistakes, <laughs> you know, and, and try to figure out, you know, on their, on their own, you know, how to work the, the technique as demonstrated. And so, of course, I walk around the gym, just observe, tell mm-hmm. them the job, um, uh, try not to give too much correction because I want them to learn um, first. I want them to, to feel it first, let them experience it. So, pretty much in, in that class, we are. I, Reach uh, for the most part, I do reach out to the learners that I am talk, talking, speaking into the steps of what they're supposed to do as mm-hmm. I'm demonstrating at the same time, and then uh, definitely allow all students to actually uh, engage in the technique. Okay, so from the video, what can you add to what you're already doing? What do you think you can add? I think probably what I would add, I know I have it in my lesson plans, is like the I think it's called the essential elements of how to do a bumping technique or the essential, essential elements of how to do the second setting technique. So probably have that listed somewhere so they can uh, see it in, in writing so they'll know what the steps are when uh, performing that technique. Okay. So you will list it. Now, how would you, how would you list that? Would you list it and have it already be listed or would you list it with the class as like an introduction on the bumping techniques? I would introduce it with the class um, and, and along with demonstration because mm-hmm. uh, it's one of those things that, you know, they'll read it, they'll, but they wouldn't know how to apply it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, of course, and, and I'll keep it simple. I think it's for this particular technique, it's only like three mm-hmm, or four. Mm-hmm. So, it's, you know, that's it. You know, how to bend in that knees, hand placement, mm-hmm. things of that nature. And so by listening, how, what do you, how do you think this will help children by adding the, the writing component to this? I'm reaching those learners who, who, uh, who can translate the reading into you know, physical action, if you mm-hmm, will. Mm-hmm. And then it can serve as a reminder. Okay, he told me we're supposed to bend our knees. Mm-hmm, you know, so mm-hmm. It shows a, a visual and mental reminder for them. Yes. Do you foresee any challenges that may happen with this? Um, the challenges that I've faced already mm-hmm. and, and it's starting to be less of an issue is the collaboration piece. Um, where does, for instance, you know, the ball can roll somewhere and someone may want to kick it, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and I tell them you when know, we have our our, our recap of how things went and uh, we talk about how that can disturb our learning process and we mm-hmm, talk about how mm-hmm. that can disturb others when they're learning because if one person does it then the other person does it before you know it we have lost you know our team work together and, and it's turned into something that looks like recess so so do you think you have any challenges by um, presenting this to the class in your gym room like 
going through the steps with the class. No. The, okay. No. That's what no. I was talking about no. with the challenge. No. That. So when do you think you will do this? Like go through the bumping techniques for. So if we already uh, mm -hmm. gone over that um, verbally. So the, like just like you said, I would add it. Okay. This is stuff that they just written written down somewhere as, as a reminder for them if they okay. forget. Okay. So uh, even at the beginning of class, when we do a review, I ask them, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what were some things that we worked on? What are some tech? What are the techniques I taught you? And they they're able to uh, respond to those questions uh, well. So let me tell you what I'm visualizing when you when you teach the lesson, when you go through your, and you hit it right on the head, which are I do, the we do, and the you do. So when you first introduce a lesson um, to kids, when you first introduce like what they'll be doing, what I envision is that you, because you have your board down there that you, that you can use, is that you have it written out. Um, this is what we're going to be learning today. This is how um, it's going to go. For example, we're going to start off by learning the bumping technique, or we're going to start off by saying we're going to be doing volleyball. These are the techniques that we're going to be learning. We're going to be learning the bumping technique. With mm -hmm. the bumping technique, this is what we're going to see. And then you model the bumping technique, mm -hmm. and then you let students do the bumping technique. I think that addresses everything, um, every kind of learner in your class, and it builds up the engagement as well for kids too. So I think that'd be good um, when you start a new technique. If you're listing out, if you start at your board that you have by letting kids know what you know you're going to be doing in that class mm -hmm. with that, and it also helps with communication with students as well too for mm -hmm. you as letting students know what you will be doing for that mm -hmm. for that class. So uh, you could do it for this too, but on your next. Um, unit, what will you start? What will you be teaching for your next unit coming up? Oh, most likely basketball. Basketball. Mm -hmm. So when you start the basketball, um, you should start definitely writing it out on the board, like all the skills that you all, we're going to learn throughout the unit, the dribbling, um, the shooting techniques for that. And each time that you're going to teach a different skill, you go over what they will be learning during that class for. I think that would be very beneficial for all the students when it comes to the learning um, mm -hmm. for that. So as an action step, and I don't want to make it too many, as an action steps, what what do you think your action step would be after this? Yeah, mainly, uh, like I said, I already have the the essential components of, of doing the bumpy technique properly in my mm -hmm. lesson plan. Mm -hmm. So just have it written in plain view for them so they can see and then uh, review it with them mm -hmm. together as we mm -hmm. read it on the board and then also going over it verbally and showing what it looks like actually so they can associate the words with the action mm -hmm. and the majority of the classes are pretty much already have it right so putting that written piece in just in serve as another reminder for them and just for further just for future references how when you are introducing a new skill will you start with this start with the written part i'll start off with questions Okay, okay. I'll start off with questions. Uh, say for oh, me. okay, yeah. So, okay. like, how do you dribble a basketball? Okay, okay, okay. You know. And then, but when you teach a technique, you're going to write that down on the board about the technique that you're mm -hmm. going to be learning. Right. Write it down and, and again, demonstrate. <laughs> I think it'll be a game changer for us if we could figure out if you are giving grades, because if you are giving grades, taking notes would be a, a good thing for you to um, to grade if students are able to like keep a basket, a gym journal or a gym notebook like this is what we did in class and that's something for you to easily check at the end of class maybe as an exit slip like mm -hmm. took notes, took notes, so that would be an easy grade for you. So right. we, I need to, I asked Ms. Gomez about that too, about the with that too. Okay. Teacher technique. Written on the board to introduce technique. For writing, practicing, and modeling. So they have all of that, so they have it written. They you model for them and they practice it and they also get feedback from that way too, so that also helps too for that. All right, 
So the next thing, um, when I come back to observe next week, what I'm looking for, I'm gonna look for the self-reflection at the end, because I did say I was coming to see that. Reflection at the end of class. And then I'm also looking for the written procedure for volleyball on the board or track paper. You let me know if you need track paper because we have plenty of it. If you need track paper, because you can put the track paper on the board too. Because if you add, because I know you're teaching, um, I think kindergarten is not learning volleyball. Oh, they are? Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh. Everyone is learning volleyball. Oh. I teach volleyball with the kindergartens. I teach with balloons. Balloons. I saw work. that. Yeah. I saw you brought in balloons. Right. I want so, to come see what that was going to... I didn't get to stay to see that, but I saw you brought in balloons. Yes. yes. It's kindergarten yes. through third grade, we use balloons. That's cool. Okay. Right. Waiting procedure of volleyball techniques on the board. Okay. It's a little bit more messy with them, but... Uh, it, 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 it still looks good. And I, I was very happy to, because they have fun with it. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you know, using the balloon and actually, you know, using volleyball techniques, you know, to hit the balloon past each other. Okay. Okay. Now, if I had miniature nets or something like that, that that's a game changer right there. We had nets for their height so they could hit the balloons over the over net. Over the net, yes, that mm -hmm. would be good. So what I had to do is I had to put a lot of tape on the uh, floor as a line that they don't cross and hit the balloon over the line when it's okay. imaginary net, so. All right, well, that is cool. Well, all right, I think that is it. So we have our written and plain view of bumping technique going over with students. Start off with questions, but then you teach the technique. Um, start off with written on the board to introduce technique for writing, practicing, and modeling. So um, in closing, I will come visit the self-reflection at the end of class and read the procedure volleyball on the board techniques on the board for that. Yeah. Okay. All right. We got that.